Hello, this is Rick Wiggins from the University of Utah, and we're going to talk about degenerative spine disease and the importance of nomenclature when we talk about degenerative spines. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the importance of this nomenclature and how we discuss degenerative spine cases, review all those degenerative spine disease imaging, both with correlating graphic CT and MRI, and we're gonna talk about how to recognize that degenerative spine disease and how to differentiate it on our imaging studies. I have nothing significant to disclose in terms of this material. So we're gonna talk about low back pain. We're gonna review quickly the spinal anatomy. And then we're gonna talk about the important part, the degenerative changes and the imaging appearances of those changes and the verbiage, the words we use to discuss that, which is really the important part here in this discussion. Now we know that low back pain can originate from any of the lumbar structures. So it can't have muscular strain, ligamentous stuff may cause low back pain much more than degenerative changes that we see. So this is a big deal. A majority of low back pain is not something that we think about as imaging on cross-sectional imaging. A lot of it is from muscle strain or ligamentous injury. We see that a lot more than degenerative changes as a cause for low back pain. Now, because of that, we know that the correlation between pain and imaging is poor. There is not a good correlation between patients' low back pain symptoms and where it's arising from and what we see on cross-sectional imaging. So we wanna be very careful about the words we use and how we describe these findings because that correlates with their therapy very importantly. And because of that, we know that conventional MRI, what we most commonly use for low back pain after plain film, is diagnostically insufficient in about 85% of those low back pain cases. Now there's a very high incidence of back pain in our population, somewhere around 45 for every thousand person per year has some kind of back pain. And the lifetime incidence is very far, over half of us will have some kind of back pain during our lifetimes. The prevalence among adults ranges somewhere around 15 to 30% and up to 5% of the population that we suspect that's increasing receives medical care every year from back pain. And it's a huge amount of visits just for a physician. So now somewhere around 1% of the population may be completely disabled because of their back pain. It's probably the most common cause of disability in patients under 45 years. We wouldn't normally think about that. And the highest prevalence is in this big central age gap between 40 and 60 years of age. And it's a huge amount of money that's expended for back pain itself, for hospital visits and workup and time off 